Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, November 13, 2013. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Leslie Hairston of the Fifth Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. This is a live and interactive show, so during the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your calls and questions. So if you have any questions or comments for Alderman Hairston, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Um, I am a native Chicagoan, grew up on the south side. I actually grew up in the community that I represent now. Um, went to uh, the lab school there and uh, went to college at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and attended law school and graduated from Loyola University Great. here in the city. Great. Um, please tell us how long have you been in, you have been in office? About 14 and a half years. And uh, you, so you were elected in 1999? 1999, that's correct. And how is this year different than previous years? Well, of course, we have a new administration, so it's about, you know, learning uh, a, a new way of doing things that are a little bit different from the previous administration. Um, you know, the, the economy is a little bit different. Um, Washington is a little bit different. Uh, so it, it, it's really a uh, different time. It is a time for learning. It is a time for growing. And um, I'm just a, a enjoying it. Great. Um, there was a city uh, city council meeting today. Yes. Is there any highlights you would like to talk about? <laughs> um, it, it, it was actually a very good um, city council meeting today. I know that there were two items um, of, of which I uh, was one of the uh, one of several co-sponsors um, and one was about uh, the elected uh, school board um, and that one uh, did not uh, get to the floor and then of course the other one um, was uh, that one was a little bit more spirited? The other one was okay, <laughs> <laughs> and it was about the TIF surplus, and um, you know there there are several aldermen that would have liked uh, to had it called for a hearing uh, to accept uh, testimony from not only their colleagues and other organizations, um, but also from the public at large. We think that is very very important for uh, people to have a say. Um, in, in how their tax dollars are spent, and um, that one uh, lost a vote, but um, it, it, it was debated spiritly, and um, it, so I think it was good for the council. I think it was good for the council. Um, please explain to us a little bit more about this process, um, if, you, if you can. Well, it, it, what, what there is is a rule in the uh, City Council Rules of Procedure called Rule 41, um, which really states how um, items that are introduced in City Council and forwarded to the respective committee, um, how long they should stay in committee, when they should be reported out, and what happens if they don't get reported out within a certain amount of time, uh, when and how they could be called to the floor. And that was uh, what was used today. Um, but then it was uh, called for a vote uh, whether or not it should come out of committee, and um, the council voted it down. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much on uh, educating the public on that. I believe we have a caller. Caller, what is your question? Well, I was just trying to figure out why the uh, information about the elected school board didn't get to the floor, but you've just uh, explained, did you explain that uh, the council didn't allow, the city council itself didn't allow it to come out of committee? Well, actually what happened was uh, the, the, for the elected school board, uh, there was a motion to lay it on the table, which means it doesn't go anywhere. It, 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 it's dead at that point. And so that's what happened with that. With the TIF surplus, um, there was debate um, on the floor, um, and the debate should have been about whether it comes out of committee. And um, the, actually, the, uh, the, the mayor pointed that out as well, as did uh, myself and several of my colleagues. Um, and it went to a roll call vote, and uh, the, the, the vote did not win. It was not successful. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Um, um, 
we're, we're approaching the holidays. Um, are there any tips for public safety or, you know, just any tips in terms of safety? Well, yeah, you know, some of the things that um, we've been seeing in our CAPS meetings and throughout all of the districts, uh, the police districts that I represent, um, are an increase in uh, the number of cell phone thefts. And I think as we approach the holidays, um, you know, usually there's a, a, an uptick in, uh, you know, crime. And so I just want everybody to be very, very vigilant. Do not wear the earbuds or the headphones or anything like that. Um, pay attention to your surroundings and, you know, whenever possible, uh, do not travel alone. Great. Thank you, Alderman. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, Alderman Harrison. I'd just like to say, firstly, that as a Chicago Public Schools alum, I commend you and the rest of the Progressive Caucus for fighting to get funds and more autonomy, frankly, for the Chicago Public School system. Um, I was very disturbed to hear that the mayor would not be interested in an audit to see how much extra money there was in, in, in the TIFs to distribute to Chicago Public Schools. And I just wanted to, you know, just maybe get your opinion on his decision and perhaps share with us his explanation for not wanting to go ahead with Alderman Fioretti's proposal. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that that is necessarily the case um, because as of November 8th, I do believe it was, he did um, declare a, a TIF surplus, so he has used that. Um, and his finance department, you know, does know uh, what is anticipated to be a surplus each year that, you know, that that's part of the budget. Um, so I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a little confusing sometimes as to uh, what exactly is in there and when a, 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 a surplus can be uh, declared. But uh, that has been done. And um, it, it, it was done uh, probably what the eighth was last week. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Thank you, Alderman, for that answer. And speaking of TIFs, how do, has uh, TIFs, in other words, uh, tax increment financing, mm -hmm. how has that affected the Fifth Ward? Well, actually, um, TIFs have been, has been very good for the Fifth Ward. Um, we have been able to uh, do, use it for exactly what it's supposed to be used for, uh, economic development and infrastructure. Uh, we were able to build a brand-new South Shore High School. Um, which um, I am very pleased. And uh, we were also able to bring in some, some businesses uh, that have not uh, otherwise might not have come uh, had we not had that TIF. So we've been able to do that. Uh, we've been able to do uh, infrastructure projects, uh, work with uh, some of our street lighting. Um, so, so we've been very fortunate. There's no money left in the TIF but, uh, right now. But, um, you know, I'm sure as the economy continues to pick up, and there are more taxes collected and more businesses um, are, are, are coming to the ward and, and we're having conversations. Um, I, I, I look forward to the, the point where we would have the problem where there is a surplus. Great. Thank you for that. Alderman, and speaking about the community and, you know, there's been um, in the news about school closings, ha has that affected the ward in any way? Well, yes, it has impacted it, but, but not uh, so much where we have empty school buildings. Um, I, I'm very fortunate that I do not have any vacant buildings. Um, there are schools that, that had a name that are no longer the school name, but there's still uh, children in the school, and um, so I'm very pleased with that, uh, that we don't have vacant buildings. Um, and we also have one school. Um, that was a turnaround school and so they brought some new programming and I've you know seen the teachers and talked to the principal and talked to the teachers and the parents and and they seem to be moving along and I think it's opening new doors for a lot of the youth providing opportunities that they did not have before and after school activities uh, that they didn't have a, uh, an opportunity to participate in before so I think it's having a, a positive effect on the community. Great. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, thank you for taking my phone call. Um, I was curious, do you have any heating or gas programs set aside for um, fifth, fifth Ward residents who may be struggling with uh, the winter bill? Well, that, that would be through some of the programs that um, not necessarily the city has, but that ComEd has. Um, they do have those. It's not specifically for the Fifth Ward, but it is citywide. 
um, and you have to meet those standards. And I'd be, my office would be more than happy to talk to you about that and uh, give you some assistance and, and direct you um, in, in the right direction. And so let me, this, I think this is a really good opportunity to give you uh, the office phone number, and that is 773-324-5555. Thank you, caller, for that question. Mm -hmm. um, let me just, uh, again, do the overhead so that everybody can get uh, Ms. Alderman's contact information. She's uh, located at 2325 East 71st Street, <coughs> phone number 773-724-5555. <coughs> and we have <coughs> another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hey, I heard about the uh, rail yard being expanded down in Englewood. I was wondering, is that in your award at all? And no, it's not. Is, okay. No, so I knew that, 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 that in that community that there were some concerns about impact on, like, the broader area and on the neighborhood so far as health concerns. So I don't know if those are all cleared up or... I, I, I don't know. I, I can tell you what my ward boundaries are. Um, the southernmost boundary is 79th and South Chicago. Um, the northernmost boundary currently... Um, is 53rd Street and uh, Lakeshore Drive. And the westernmost boundary is uh, Cottage Grove. And, of course, the easternmost boundary would be the lake. Great. Thank you for that question, caller. Okay. Uh, I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Uh, my question is for the alderman. I understand that under the remap that's coming up soon, uh, probably there uh, on in the fifth ward, it will go north a little bit farther, uh, and I don't know exactly how much farther it will go, and, and will this be happening soon? Well, that that's a very good question, um, and and it's one of those questions that has a Chicago uh, answer, yes and no. Um, for purposes of zoning and our garbage pickup, our grid system. Um, we are operating in uh, the new ward boundaries in terms of your everyday city services. Uh, we are still operating under the current boundaries uh, from the election in 2011, and the new boundaries will not go into effect um, until 2015 after uh, at that election, even though um, we have been voting also in uh, those new boundaries. And uh, yes, caller, you are correct. Um, I do go further south, I, I, further north. Um, I lose a little bit of my communities um, in on the south side, and 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 that's always uh, disheartening and a little bit sad because after working with uh, the community for so many years, it's 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 always hard. Um, but I look forward, and I have already begun reaching out um, to the the new neighbors and the new residents and I am looking forward to working with them and serving them as well. Thank you. Thank you caller for that question. I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening. Uh, with uh, citizens, it seems uh, Chicago citizens being taxed and getting the red light cameras up and running and the raising of uh, parking violation fines. Uh, my question is about economic development. What's being done to get businesses uh, to help uh, take the load off of the community and maybe get these businesses you know, to give some money into the, into the city? Okay, so there, there are two questions that, that I'm hearing there. I mean, one, you're talking about economic development, um, and then the other thing, you're talking about the fees and fines that, that the city has. Um, and, and, and I think that uh, we have had enough, you know, fees and fines. Um, it, it's time to try to find other ways of generating revenue. Um, I don't believe that it's good to balance uh, the city's budget on the backs of a few or of the backs of the people that are least able to afford it. And let's face it, uh, when we're talking about some of these fines, these are not going to be a problem um, for people that can afford to have a livery service. They're not going to be a problem uh, for people that make uh, six or seven figures. That's not going to be an issue for them. It's going to be an issue for those of us that, that, that work every day, that uh, some of us that take public transportation um, and, and, and drive maybe after we get home. Um, but those are the ones that is going to hit the hardest. And um, I think that we've got to do better as a city um, in, in terms of spreading out uh, where we are, are, are doing the fees. I know that uh, my constituents on the lakefront uh, pay more in their fees and their facade fees and in their life safety evaluation fees. And now uh, they, they've got the new fees that they want to add and they've got to turn in their gas bills. And 
and now they have to pay a registration fee and we'll see what fees come up next uh, next year that they will add to that but I think that we've got to find a way that is fair where everybody uh, has an op everybody is is um, does their fair share and it doesn't stay on one group of person people or the other uh, your second question was about economic development well, what we need to talk about when we talk about economic development is we need to talk about economic development in all communities, not just in some. Um, you know, not just on your Mag Mile, not just on Roosevelt Road. Um, you need to talk about economic development throughout so that we make all neighborhoods healthy. And um, I think that the city, and I know that the city should do a better job um, at making sure that communities such as mine um, you know, have access to and that the city actually endorses and supports and advocates for the neighborhoods such as South Shore uh, to attract businesses, the same businesses that are coming downtown, the same businesses that are on Roosevelt Road. If you were to pull the zip codes, you see that people from our communities are shopping there and we need to have the same types of businesses um, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because, um, you know, a few weeks ago, Dominic's announced uh, that they were not uh, going to have any more stores. And that deeply impacts uh, my community. I have a Dominic store. And, you know, a lot of my constituents have said, you know, well, what about Mar Mariano's? Um, you know, that is something that, that, that they shop at. That is a place where they shop at. Um, and I am looking for the city. Um, you know, to, to assist us in, in, in seeing to it that we do not have a, an empty building and that uh, the people that did hold the jobs uh, with Dominic's, although they have been invited to a job fair, that they have an opportunity to continue to be able to work in their neighborhood. Thank you, Carla, for that question, and thank you, Alderman, for the answer. It we was do a have... very long answer. No, it's, it's great. Thank you. Uh, we do have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? The question is, I heard, my name is Edna Pittman, and I heard the alderman say that they had new lights put up with the TIF money. I'd like to know, where is it determined where the new lights are placed? Well, any money that is used by, that is used from a TIF has to be used within that TIF district. So that that's how that is done. Um, with lights in my neighborhood, uh, what I did last uh, year, we had uh, the participatory budgeting uh, process whereby uh, how the alderman's menu money, the money that uh, the city gives us for infrastructure improvements such as lighting, uh, was decided by the community at large. So in, in my ward, the community decides where the lights go. I am in your ward, and I wasn't aware of that. Well, Ms. Pittman, if you give my office a call, we will get you plugged in. I think I saw you at a meeting, but okay. Thank you. I've Thank been you. asked them for six years already. Okay. I know you're on Cottage Grove, Ms. Pittman. Yes, darling. <laughs> Have a blessed day. And, and Ms. Pittman, let me just say that I, that is a ward boundary, and so I share that with another ward. So there has to be agreement on both sides. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Um, I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hello. I'd like Alderman Harrison to inform us as to what is happening with the proposal to change the name of Stony Island Avenue to Bishop Brazier. Um, that, that still remains in committee. There, there, has, there has been no movement on that whatsoever. And how long can it stay with the committee? Well, it it can stay in committee until it get it gets called, or it can it stay there indefinitely. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for that question. Mm -hmm. You're all walk, you're watching Political Forum. This is brought to you as a community service by Can TV. Um, if you have any comments or question for the alderman, please call her at three one two seven three eight ten sixty. And we're going to go ahead again and put in the alderman's contact information. Um, she has her email. is <coughs> lhairston at cityofchicago.org. And she does have a web, website, www.lesliehairston.com. And uh, as you can see, it's got both ward maps. <laughs> so, alderman, um, yes. are there any priorities that you have for this year? Well, of course, you know, I, I am always advocating 
economic development, um, trying to uh, talk with some of the larger big box retailers. Uh, now that the economy is on the uptick, um, you know, they are, they are talking and, and we are in discussions. And um, we are moving forward with buildings that were once abandoned, abandoned uh, that we found used, uses for, um, that we have been able to hire from uh, the community to help uh, do a, a gut of that, and they are beginning a rehab. And um, it's been partnering with uh, community groups um, to make sure that we have just what we need to, to make ourselves a self-sufficient ward. Great. Um, Alderman, um, speaking of communities and economic development, how has this affected um, violence in the Fifth Ward, if any? Well, I, I, I think it's not just one or the other. Um, I think um, violence has, has very many tentacles, if you will. Um, education is a component. Um, housing, affordable housing is a component. I mean, obviously jobs are a component. Um, but then we have to look at the family structure as well. So you've got a lot of different things going on, and it's not just one thing or another, but it's a combination. I think you have to look at, um, you know, that there are not as many jobs in the city of Chicago. And as a matter of fact, when jobs do come to the city of Chicago, it's, they, they are not for the people that are here. The company comes and they bring their people with them. And so they're not really creating jobs for the residents of the city of Chicago. Yes, they are jobs, but those people are not necessarily choosing to reside in, in the city of Chicago, and they're living in the suburb. Meanwhile, you have the people that are living in, in the city of Chicago finding it difficult to either afford to stay, be able to afford to stay in their, their, their units. Uh, either their jobs are, are, are cutting back, and, um, and, they're, and we're not creating any new jobs. Uh, so we are chasing them out of the city, which is why I think that we've seen uh, a, a, a decrease in the number of residents in the city of Chicago. And uh, that's not who we are as a, as a city. Uh, we have always been a, a working class city, a, a city of uh, several communities. Um, and um, I, 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 am, I, I really don't want to see that disappear. Um, I don't think we need to be a city where only the wealthy can afford to live here. I think that uh, the city has a lot to gain by having people from diverse backgrounds uh, socially and economically. Thank you, Alderman. We just have a few minutes left. Um, is there any final words that you would like to say to the audience before we wrap up the show? Um, I, I would just like to uh, thank the people that called in. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate your questions. Um, I thought they were very thoughtful questions, and um, I, I appreciate the fact that when we do speak out, um, I have your support, and that really means a lot. So I, I thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hairston, and thank you, viewers, for your calls. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by Can TV. Our telephone technician for today was Steve. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening.